you know, people could be creative in all kinds of ways in, in the most limited situations. Cornelia, thanks so much for agreeing to speak with us during this very strange and difficult time. Um, Cornelia, you've often said that your work is inherently unstable. It's in flux. I have to say this is an unusually apt quote uh, for today's world as we try and find our way through this challenging reality. How do you think work like yours might speak to today's situation and vice versa? Well, I hope it it speaks to the situation. I think uh, I, you know, my work is not didactic, you know, um, it's, its meaning is quite elusive. And I think hopefully is that for me, it's all about having space within the work for projection. And so if people can use the work in that way, then, you know, that is hopefully a, a good thing. <laughs> you know, we've all got the same situation, you know, worldwide. You know, that everybody's doing lockdown, everybody's fearful for their nearest and dearest. Um, we don't quite know what it means. We've got Trump, you know, kind of contradicting everything and creating a lot of friction. Um, so I don't know, especially for me, because my re more recent works have been quite political, you know, and the politics of this epidemic is fascinating. It's really um immoral in lots of ways well one thing i wonder now i mean i wonder whether because we're in the grip of the covid19 crisis um perhaps we're distracted from other issues because you know we know that civil liberties are being rolled right back up again you know critical environmental protections uh and i wonder you know, what your thoughts are about this, because these are presumably things that won't be coming back anytime soon. I think the whole environment, um, that we have this clear skies, we have you no know, contrails, we have, you know, Venice with blue water in the canals. Um, you know, I think it's going to be kind of strange to then go back and pollute everything again. <laughs> when the whole engine starts going again, then there will be, you know, there will return to what it's you know was before and um and i think hopefully it's became made people really much more aware of their environment you know and what man has done to it and i worry a lot uh, because i know a lot about climate change from one way or another i have scientist friends and, and it worries me that there is there is other things to you know it could become runaway and if it becomes runaway then you know you know, we we meet our little window of chance to do something. It's it's kind of closing, and we've been screaming at politicians for years. I mean, it's you know they're not listening, and I don't know why they're not listening. A collaboration has you know often been quite central to your practice. I mean, you work with a wide range of people to realise your work from you know other practitioners through to prisoners for example. So obviously that part of your practice is quite curtailed now. How do you actually manage that? I don't know. I'm trying to manage it, but um, I'm not sure if I'm managing it very well. Um, I'm finding it very hard to work, to be quite honest, um, because I realise I, I work a lot with people. And I'm very used to working right down to the moment, you know, as I make work for an exhibition or site specific. Um, and I usually like that kind of pressure, you know, to make new work in, in a kind of, um, in response to something. Um, but here it's very weird because all that, you know, responding to things is, you know, you've just got the virus to, to respond to. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. We've got all this time, you know, uh, in our lockdown. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, visualising, visualising stuff um, when you haven't got the means to produce it. Um, so I'm trying to come out of this situation with, uh, with ideas and um, see how that can make them work. Mm. Um, often your work has been around 
contrasting or oppositional states, for example, chaos and order, law and lawlessness, war and peace, I can't help but feel like now there's this feeling of before this time and after. And I wonder what you think about, you know, what can artists contribute and, you know, what would you say to the next generation of artists trying to move forwards from this stage? I would say necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, you know, people can be creative in all kinds of ways in, in the most limited situations. Um, so I think uh, we've got to take that on board, that things have, are, haven't stopped forever, but they have had a pause. And that pause is, um, there's time. That's one thing we do have is time. You know, time to do things that you might not have been able to do before um, or doing them differently than you, you did before. And what about your own practice? I mean, do you feel like it's shifted or something is changing in response to this time? Um, I think it, I think it, I think it surely is. Um, but I'm not trying to look at it too analytically. You know, I'm trying to, uh, uh, if I do that, then I sometimes box myself into a corner. Um, so I always like to keep things in a very hazy, <laughs> hazy sort of out of focus way, you know, like trying to feel what it is I want to say. I mean, you talked about people mobilising just before and I wonder, you know, what can artists do now? You know, what role can they play, you know, in terms of asking the right questions moving forwards? Uh, I mean, that's a difficult one because... Um, it's how can we get artists to be heard? I think it, it's good for everybody just to be open their mouths and be good citizens. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Cornelia, for your time. It's great to chat, and I really look forward to seeing you at some point in person. Okay. <laughs>